So a lot of your newer servos are designed to run over some network, whether it be Ethernet or one of those fiber networks or something like that. But there's still a large amount of servos out there that run off of basic analog commands. And that's what we're gonna be replacing with this setup here. It's an existing system. It has a PLC that's sending analog speed command and it sends an enable and a reverse signal. And so that's what I have worked to mimic on this one. So on your basic servo system, you'll have some type of servo controller. Sometimes it's built into the servo drive, many times it's external of it. And then you'll have a servo drive, which in this case we're using this um, Allen Bradley Kinetics 5100. And then you will have a servo motor. Which, and the biggest difference between it and a regular motor is that on the back of it, it will have either an encoder or some of the older ones may have a resolver on them. But they can provide really precise speed, torque, and positioning. And that's the advantage of the servo motor. Also, big warning, a lot of them do have a battery on their encoder. Read the instructions before you go, just starting to jerk wires off the motors and everything, some of them alarm, and you gotta go in and manually reset them. There can be all types of little things like that. So that's the first thing, is don't just start jerking wires off servos. Let's go ahead and throw some power on this. And let's talk a little bit about the setup that I have. So I've made switch one, the enable for the servo. I've actually made switch to the over travels. That way we can talk a little bit about it. And I've wired in this e-stop right here. Also, for my specific application, I needed that reverse input. So this one does an enable to enable the servo. It gives it an analog speed command, which I'm gonna use our analog simulator to do. And then when it needs to reverse, it actually has a reverse output to reverse whatever speed you're sending to the analog. First, let's just talk about the servo here. Oh, get that key out of the way before it goes flying. But the servo is not enabled right now. That means this motor just can freely turn. Now I'm going to switch the enable on. And now when I grab it, hopefully you can see that. I can even get it up here a little closer. And now, let me turn that back off. You can look at the key. Right now, it, it, it rotates really easily. And now I switch my servo on, and it will not turn now at all. So it is locked on that particular position, and it's gonna try to hold that position with everything it has until it gets a command to go somewhere else. So as we bring up our analog signal, hopefully I can hold all this, so there's zero when it stopped. I bring it up to point one, it starts to rotate and you can bump it on up. I'm not gonna bump it up really fast, but it can go, if you go to 10 volt here, it'll be running full speed, which I think on this one is 3000 RPM. But also on a typical servo controller, if you wanna go reverse, you just run it down into the negative voltage. So these commands are usually minus 10 volt to plus 10 volt. Minus 10 volt being max speed one direction, plus 10 volt being max speed the other direction. And a servo controller will vary this analog signal to keep it at the precise position it wants. Put that down, but hey, I'm gonna try, let's see if we can put that on it and see if you can make it where you can see it a little better. Yeah, I think you can see that. All right, here, let me pop that back off. Let's just take our trusty Sharpie and we will color this one. There, now you can see it. My arm was getting tired really fast holding that motor up. But so yeah, so we're at 0.1 volt here. You can see it slowly rotating around, but if we bring it on up to say one volt, it's going faster. We'll bring it back down near 0.1 volt, slowly going in this direction. As soon as we go negative 0.1, it's gonna start going the other direction. And so a basic servo drive, that's all it does. It's gonna to respond to this minus 10 volt to plus 10 volt signal. And there will be a controller that is actually regulating the analog signal to keep it where it wants it at. Now let's talk a little bit about the over travels that you'll see on typical machines, because this is one thing that can stump a lot of people 
is they'll say, hey, I've got a machine that will only run one direction. And usually that will be some type of over travel. So right now we're running, let's see, let's start in the negative direction. So we're running in the negative direction and I have switch two set up that if I switch it to the left, it is going to break that negative over travel. And the moment I do, it stops. And it's not, it doesn't matter what voltage in the negative direction we put into this, it is going to stay still. Now the trick is, it's only a negative over travel. So if I bring this on up into the positive direction, then it's gonna start rotating the other way. So it'll run one way, but we bring it back into the negative, it's gonna stop. And that's because of this over travel. Now most over travels are normally closed. That means when there is nothing wrong, there should be a continuous path for current through that circuit. So that's something to be aware of. Now I'm gonna show you the positive over travel while we're here. Hit that positive over travel and immediately the motor is gonna stop. But we could go backwards. And what this is for is usually so that you can, if you hit an over travel, which I guess I didn't actually see what an over travel is. An over travel is usually especially on a linear machine it's an extent that you don't want to go beyond so it'll allow you to run out and when you hit that over travel it's going to stop but it'll still allow you to run the other way that way you can back it back off of it so that's very common now the other thing about this is the e-stop most servos do have an e-stop and some of them can be a little trickier to reset from so right now we're all right we're going in the negative direction you saw the over travel we stop we resume stop we can resume, but when we hit the e-stop on this particular model, stop, and we pull the e-stop back out, it doesn't resume. It's gonna require a manual reset to get going again. And I've seen a lot of times that people, probably unsafely, just wire the e-stop to a jumper, and then the jumper either comes loose or something happens to that circuit, they never wired any reset onto it, and the next thing you know, their system won't run. Well, when you hit the e-stop, see if I can get this over where you can see it. Right now, it's saying E13. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a great display on the front of this. It'll tell you exactly what's going on. And if we pull it out, it's still saying E13. And if we look in the book, that's going to be that e-stop condition. And it's going to require that manual clear. So there's just some really basic things to look at. Oh, one other thing. So this is in speed control mode. So if I take it, let's go to 0.1 volts, and I try my best to clamp this down. Oh, you can see the motor twist. I'm not gonna do anything crazy on YouTube, but um, you cannot stop this motor unless you have enough power to overcome what it can put out. So even at zero, you grab it and try to turn the shaft, unless you have enough power against it to overcome what it's capable of putting out, then you will not make that shaft turn. So it has 100% torque at zero speed in speed mode. And the analog voltage is exactly that, it is the speed. But there's also another mode you'll see a lot called torque mode. So now let's take a quick look at how torque mode works. So here is the software for the Kinetics 5100. And I admit it's a really intuitive software. With very little effort, you can figure out how to navigate through it. And the only thing it took me a while to find because it was hidden right in plain sight is the mode of it. It's right here at the top. And right here, it can have position mode, which would be by the terminal block, position mode by register input. And you can have speed mode, which we're currently in, torque mode, which we're gonna talk about, and a couple of other modes. But now let's, let's go to this torque mode and we're disabled so we're going to say yes to that okay so now it's in torque mode and we're going to try to really carefully talk about the difference in it so we have our voltage source at 0.1 volt and we're going to enable it now it can feel a little resistance very little though at 0.1 volt now i'm going to raise it up to 0.2 oops and you see it's kind of start, it's starting to spin. I don't know if you can see it's spinning or not. Well, it's spinning not because it's trying to get to a position, but because it's trying to main, it's trying to attain a certain torque. So if I just take this and just start dragging it against it, I can actually stop this shaft because that's the amount of torque that it is 
needing to hold there. Now if I can do this without making a fool of myself on YouTube, you can see the shaft there, and I'm gonna hold really hard. That's 0.2 volt. There's 0.3, and actually I could feel it twist my arm a little bit when I did that. There's 0.4, 0.5, Okay, and that's about 0 0.6 is getting to the point that's all that I can hold. So the more voltage you put on it, the more torque that this motor is going to try to put out. 